everyone and welcome back to my channel. So this will be another colour along, I won't call it part two because that was technically finished in one video. It was actually a tiny bit longer than I realised for me to do this little square but I still love how he turned out, I think he's so cute. And I'll just show you the back of the book as well, there's just a tiny bit of bleed through which is unfortunate and this is the most guard colouring book. Now, I know that it's really hard to get a hold of this but I know it's a popular book. I did find, my husband got me a second copper off eBay. Uh, I don't even think I'm going to touch that thing for the fact that it was a gift. Uh, he went out of his way to find it for me which I thought was really really nice. Uh, anyway, so I did that with ink tents and then the Derwent drawing pencils. So my plan is with this one is I'm going to either try and do all gouache or gouache and pencils. Now I did just pull out my gouache and it is very, very, very cracked. It does look a bit of a mess. Now when you first get these, they're lovely to look at. They come in these little separate containers and you take off the, the lid of each of them and they're really soft consistent. So now at this point I've had these for a couple of years so they have gone hard. But whenever I've chosen to use them, I've just re-wet them and used them like watercolours and they've activated just fine. So I don't feel the need to go out and get another set when the as much as they don't look pretty, this will work. And I was just cleaning the lid off to use this as a palette. I didn't realise it was actually Artex. Artex. Is that how you say this brand? Artex. Uh, and I've actually got their colouring pencils. So I might actually use the colouring pencils over the top of this when I've uh, done the gouache. That's my plan anyway. The only thing I've forgotten here is a cloth. So let me get a cloth out. I don't know when this video will go live. It'll probably go live after the video that I'm talking about. But uh, I have got up on my channel a giveaway of the Artex pencils. So if you just look under my channel, it'll be not the last video the one after I think or the one before I'm, get I'm confusing myself I'm confusing myself because I'm trying to record uh, a few videos in one day because I know I'm going to be busy at the end of this week and next week so I'm using different tape this time I'm using um, it's a low tack I was recommended this by Kirsty from Kirsty Colour and Sketch now I've found this hit and miss some pages it's been absolutely fine and then others, it's been a nightmare. So I've still not found the perfect masking tape or washi tape to uh, to use on the hunt. So let's pop this, it doesn't have to be completely neat. I went over the lines a little bit on that side, so not the end of the world. Let's get that on. Now I've got a mixture of paint brushes here now with which one is it now? So when I'm using ink tents or watercolour pencils, I like to use aqua brushes. But when I'm using watercolour or gouache, I like to use watercolour brushes. And if I'm using acrylic, I'll use uh, cheap watercolour brushes that I don't mind getting um, spoilt because the acrylic paint does do that. So I'm, I think I'm going to test this first. Pull out my handy dandy pad. I bought this for when I went to Florida. You can see the times and rides that I went on. <laughs> but I'm using it now. Home time. <laughs> I'm using it now for uh, just swatching as I go. Just to test. Test colours out. Alright, where's my squidgy thing? There is my squidgy thing. My pipette. Now, I don't know what colour scheme I want to go for, so I'm probably better off with my sprayer. So I'm just going to activate them all. Silly with this one, because these two whites at the bottom, it could help if you'd see. Um, they're very slightly different. I would have liked another colour of paint instead of two whites. Well, it is what it is. I'd like to try a different set of gouache. Curiosity, really. So, the 
this isn't the best bit on the dust watch on there. Space Mountain, Big Thunder Mountain, Magic Kingdom. It's just while I'm waiting for this to activate. Magic Kingdom, Big Thunder Mountain, the Brainstormer, Brainstormers and Space Mountain. Yeah, we, we love the Space Mountain. Test Track as well, we love that. And Space, that was good. Hollywood Studios, Rock and Roller Coaster, yeah, like that, apart from the start. I hated the start. Indiana Jones' stunts, that were good. Uh, and the fireworks, I don't think we stopped for the fireworks. Uh, Animal Kindle, Festival of the Lion King, we didn't stop for that because I was way too tired. Dinosaur, that was a good ride. Universal was my favourite. I prefer Universal over um, the Disney parks. You got on the rides really quick as well. So I'll just use a Princeton Neptune size 4. Oh, whoa, 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 calm down. So apparently the brush wants to go into the brown, so let's test the brown <laughs> first. I don't mind if it's on then. Um, I'll just have to do it on here. The spine of this book is... Uh, I can't really remember how pigmented these were because like I said I've had them for a couple of years at this point or maybe they need longer to activate. Yeah, I've had them for a long time. Let's try this blue. It's not too bad. I, I do think it needs more water and more time. Let's try this fuchsia. See, that's definitely not as pigmented as I remember. So maybe these have just had the day. And I will have to just get a replacement set. I'm only going to buy them, though, if I'm going to use them. I'm uh, getting to the point, I said this a while ago, I was getting to the point where I don't want to keep buying out supplies and I'm not going to use them. Let's try this purple. I only want to keep things around me and in this room that I really, really love. Yeah, they do seem to have changed. So that's unfortunate, but it is what it is. I'll just have to work with it. So let's load it up with a bit more water. I'll load it up with some water uh, and get everything ready. And then I will, I'll need to decide my colours and then I'll be back.
So let's get some of these colours on the palette. I'm going to try like um, autumn colours I think. So I want some of the red. I have added some more water but I'm not filled with much hope with these. Well, that was not too bad. That's probably enough. Some of the orange. Mixed in with the red apparently. I like that shade, whatever shade this is. That's a nice one. I just want to make sure that I'm mixing enough colours or put, putting enough colours onto the palette. I don't want to get halfway through and run out. Right, so we need, I don't think this green here is going to be right. So yeah, it's more of a turquoise, so I'm going to have to mix some of the other green in with that. That's a little bit better. I wouldn't mind it a little bit darker than that though. Let's try a tiny bit of the black. I hope I've managed to get this off my brushes because these are my favourite brushes. <laughs> so, there's the little guy. Um, I think I'll just do the leaves first. So I'll just do a thin layer of the green all over. I'm hoping that I've got the right size brush here. It's too pigmented to take some of that off. As long as I'm careful, I should be alright. And my idea is, let's get an even smaller brush now that I've filled that in. And go in with a size 0 brush. And then just add here and there some of all these different colours that I've just put on the palette. I am forgetting that I'm using gouache here and it's it's a lot more pigmented than I remember. Let's lift some of that colour up. I still I want some of that green to still show through. So more of the green. Some of this orange. Will that just make a muddy mess? Let's leave that and see what it does. It's just reminded me at the minute this just like really thick watercolour and I know that it's a mixture between watercolour and um, acrylic paint. Oh that was a lot. I've got a funny feeling I'm going to have to go over the top of this with pencil because I'm not the best at gouache. Definitely not to uh, practice enough to try and get the effect that I'm going for, but we'll just see. Might be able to pull it off. Let's do this one while I'm here. I think there's one at the top, isn't there? That's not part of the ear. back in with the red. Just dab it on. Yeah, this one might uh, not look as pretty as the first one. I just watered it down a little bit more. I'm 
that's why I put the tape around just so I can be a little bit messier. I don't know why I'm being so careful with the lines because I need to paint in a background. That's some of that brown shade. This is, I don't know what colour this is. In the pan it looks more brown but now that it's on the palette it looks more like mustard. Going with the darker green. See if that adds anything. I think the red probably works the best. I just don't want it leaking mudder. Mix the red in there with the brown. I am noticing that I'm not having to load my brush up anywhere near as much as I do with watercolour. I suppose if I wanted it a little bit more opaque I probably would and it dries really quick as well something like red I think I'm just wishing it to be awesome now be here before we know it. A little bit of that red as well, I like the red in it. So, so let me have a think with uh, the little mouse guy. I think I might stick with that same, what I keep calling, I don't actually know the colour of it, like the mustard colour. I think we'll stick with that. So let me get my paint uh, palette all ready because I've got uh, paint everywhere. So I went ahead and I just took that colour out of the the pan. I don't know how you describe it. I thought it was a brown at first. I'm going to pull some of that colour back and just water it down and just see how pigmented it is. Now I've switched over to a bigger brush purely because I don't want to get Lines, this exact same thing as this, as this side. The bigger the area, the quicker you want to work. <laughs> Don't uh, do like the ear and then half of the face and walk off and do something else and then come back because you'll have a, a really pronounced line. So that's his cape, just figuring where everything is. The sword, the cape's hanging over. Right, let's just go. I'm hoping I won't have to load the brush up, to be honest. If I go out the lines as well, it's fine, because I still need to do that background. So I do need to load it up now, but I've done the, done the head. Done the head, so that's done. Load up the brush again. Do his little arm in his hand. And I can start there to load up again. Oh, I've gone a little bit over his cape. Dab that off. So I'll have to let that completely dry now before I do the cape. Otherwise it'll just bleed into each other. Load it up again. I 
I'm interested to see how that's going to dry now. I think I'll start working on the background. Just be a little bit more careful this time. So that's the amount of paint that I got there. So I'm going to leave that and darken it up a bit for the shadows. Actually, I want to do that now before this starts drying. So add some of the darker brown. That should be enough. I'm going to blend it out as well with clean water in a minute. See now because I'm rushing I'm going out the land everywhere. Clean my brush off and then go around to blend them lines out. Just like that. Well I got lucky. <laughs> got lucky with that then. Somebody's hands. There would be a shadow cast from the sword. Let's pop that in. I think I want to add a little bit here actually. Hopefully that dries all right. So for the background, shall I go with, I'm thinking blues and purples, but now I'm thinking browns and reds. Browns and reds, maybe. Right, so. It feels like it does need a lot more water to be activated this now. Uh, so the red. Put the red there. This one's like an orangey red, it's like a vermilion. Load the brush up, yeah, it's more on the orangey side that actually. There's not actually a true red in this. The red, that, that looks red there, yeah it does, but when you put it down on the palette it's more fuchsia. And then some of that dark brown. Just at the end. So there's the four colours I want to do the background with. Switch to the size 4 brush and then just use all the different colours as I go. I'm going to switch brushes. I do apologise. I want to go even smaller with a size 0. My idea here is I'm just placing these colours randomly. I don't mind if these dry because I'm going to go over the top of it a couple of times. And then what is meant to be the red is more of like a fuchsia shade. Now, if I was doing this in my own time, I would be being really, really careful about going over the edges, just like that. But for the sake of the video, I'll try and be a little bit quicker. I'll switch over to this orangey red now. I'm having to load this up a little bit more because it's only a tiny, tiny brush. Doesn't hold much this one. 
into up here. That's going to bleed into the leaf there, whoops, never mind. And then with that darker brown, to put it in a couple of areas and I'm going to go over the top of this with some water. You'll get the idea of uh, what I want, what I'm trying to achieve. Some more of that red. So I'll switch over to the number four brush. Make sure the brush is clean. Then just add some water and let it move around and do its own thing. There's a little bit there that I've missed. Just got it on his toe as well. So yeah, take your time when you're doing it. Uh, that little bit there, wasn't it? I want to add a little bit more of that pink. I think for the cape, I want to stick to similar colours. I'm going to try actually to mix the pink and the red. I say that very loosely because they're not. Let's try and mix them together. Maybe add a little bit more of that pink. Just see what that looks like. So it was a good job I put uh, tape on there. Eh? Now, I do want to stay in the lines for this part. That's not as pigmented as I wanted it to be. So yeah, I think if anybody else has had these, have they just, have they had the day now, do I have to buy new ones? Because I've got translucent watercolours that are more pigmented than these, but we'll just work with it. It's what I've got for the minute. the sword a little bit there as well whoops so for the sword uh, well a couple of different colors here I could try whoa that's way too much way too much see the blue is really pigmented so that's it's, it's weird it doesn't want to make its mind up what it wants to be right let's try this I'm going to put one line of that blue and then go over the top with some water and hope that it will bleed out into it. Just like that. Uh, the handle. I've got a black I want to mix with the shade that I chose for the mouse. It's 
doucement. Yeah, I'm a lot more used to uh, watercolours than this. It's not too bad. I don't hate it. Some of these areas here I'm not overly happy with. Um. And then for the rock, I'm just going to play it safe with the brain straight from the pan. I think I will use the Artex pencils just to do a bit of shading over the top. I'll let this dry probably halfway and then use the heat gun. So it probably will make the paper bend a little bit, but that's what that one did yesterday and it's, it's more or less flattened out already. So that's uh, the painting side of it done. This is where you have to be a little bit patient. This is not not what I like doing. I don't like wasting. I just like doing the next part straight away. But yeah, I'll, I'll wait for a little bit, then use the heat gun and then we'll start on the pencil work. That is actually dried a lot better than I thought it would. It's technically night a day later because I didn't have time to finish it, but that one hasn't bent the paper at all, so brilliant. So the gouache is actually better in this paper it seems, which is strange. Uh, again, I don't really think I'm going to need to add uh, much pencil over the top. I have pulled out my Artex pencils though, just for a few colours. Like I want a darker red, that might do the trick. I'm literally just press record, there's a helicopter going over. Uh, this is Crimson Lake. I don't think I'll have to give that a sharp and I think that should be okay as it is. So actually I'm going to bring you in just a little bit closer. There we go, now you can see what I'm doing and the camera's wobbling. So all I want to do with this is just deepen up where the folds are and I might use a bit of the black as well. Just really easy. You can see with the other picture it's quite uh, effective without much pencil. So I don't think it needs it. I'm not going to go on mine anyway. Just a little bit here and a little bit there. The sword turned out better than I thought. So I need some underneath here as well. These have got to be along with the brute furnace. One of my go-to budget pencils now. Really impressed with them. But as I say with everything, just because it works for me doesn't mean it works for you. I've spoken to a couple of different people and they either really love them, like more than me, or they've used them once or twice and refused to use them again. So it, it really does depend on the person. So I'll go in with black. Just want to deepen some of these lines up. Just a little bit more. Yeah, I'm pleasantly surprised about that gouache. But I do think that it should be more pigmented than it is. Is, is that an issue because of the age of it? I don't know. I'm actually going to use this black. And shade a little bit on the inside of the ear. Just a little bit. Because they already added that darker brain. I don't really need to add too much. And talking about a darker brain, this one needs, is it baked earth, this one? Ba burnt ochre. Burnt ochre. That should be the perfect colour just to deepen this up a little bit. And then maybe go over the black a little bit. Using medium pressure here as well. 
Uh, we can go over some of these darker areas too. I could have kept the black out for that part of the sword. Um, I think I'll go with the grey. A warm grey, there's a nice one in this set. Which there is quite a few greys. So let's have a see. Well that's not a grey, but that's a nice colour. Uh, burnt umber. Uh, sepia. Sepia? Sepia. That'll do. Just the deeper around the edges up. Not too much. Like I said, I don't think it needs it. Now for the sword, I just want to deepen this very edge up here. So I want a nice indigo colour really. Uh, indigo blue and the heavens have just opened wow <laughs> I was lucky because I was just outside pruning my cucumber plants so I got in the house at the right time see perfect perfect match just a little something just to deepen it up And then I think for the leaves, uh, this is quite a dark, dark green, so that should be okay. And where the very centre is, just go over that area a little bit. Not on every single one because I don't want them leaking samey samey. Wow, and the wind's picking up too. I don't know if the camera's going to pick that up. Unless I shut my window, the dog's going to have an heart attack. I'm telling you, the weather in England at the minute is so weird. Nice and quiet now. Well, you can come back in. <laughs> So I'm sure I said this in that video that I'm not adding any sort of bling or anything. I don't think these pages are going to need it but just looking at these two together now I think that these are going to look so cool when they're finished and I'm still debating whether to leave it white or put in a black background. I'd love to hear your thoughts. What do you think? And I think that's probably about it that I'm going to do regarding pencil. So we're halfway there, we're halfway there. I do hope that you like this one. I still think I like this one more purely because of how the, the brick in the background turned out. But it was interesting to try the gouache. Uh, I think maybe next time. I don't want to use the same mediums again. So maybe next time I'll use either watered down acrylic, uh, nail, co nail colour, nail colour 2 I could use, uh, distressing might be a little bit hard getting it into the tiny, tiny areas but I could always give it a go uh, and then we've got watercolour as well so we've got lots of different mediums to try and I'm sure I've got some uh, other things that I could attempt to use on these pages because the paper is really really nice. But thank you so much for watching. Please do leave me a like and subscribe to my channel if you're new. And then, I nearly said part three, but I'm not doing this in parts. The next one will probably be this one. This one, and I'm looking forward to working out how to do the wood, the wood background. So again, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.